Okay, so it's time to go back and uh, look again at what we called um, natural radioactivity. Natural radioactivity. Also known as spontaneous. Something that's spontaneous radioactivity. And what that means is it's radioactive on its own naturally, not because we've done anything to it. And lots of substances, lots of elements are naturally radioactive. Okay? Um, another word, and so we talk about how then they go, undergo what's known as radioactive decay. Radioactive decay. Where they give off particles and they decay, they go down to a new element or a new entity with fewer particles. Another word for radioactive decay is transmutation. Transmutation. Okay, and so there could be spontaneous transmutation, which are the types that we're going to talk about today that happen on their own. And then later we'll get into artificial transmutation, ones that we bring about by doing certain things. Okay, but for today, the ones that happen on their own. So this again goes back to Marie and Pierre Curie. Um, they were two of the first three people that we have documented, at least, that worked with spontaneous uh, radioactive materials. They had no idea what they were. Uh, the other guy was Henri Baccarel, and there's actually a unit of measure named after Baccarel. But um, Marie, they, they didn't know what was going on. They just knew they were admitting these particles. And there's lots of stories of things they did with these radioactive substances that they because they didn't know they were safe. Like Marie used to sleep with a lump of, I'm not sure if it was radon or polonium, on her pillow. And it would glow in the dark and be like a nightlight for her. Pierre used to strap a piece of it to his uh, arm with cloth and then they would study how it was eating away at his arm. It's probably not a surprise that both of them suffered from cancer, right? Mutations of their cells from the exposure to this radiation. Pierre died pretty young. He was really sick and weak and feeble. They didn't know why, but now we would know it was from the exposure to the radiation. Um, and actually, he died by getting run over by a horse and carriage um, because he it was raining outside and he slipped in the road and then he was too weak to get out of the way. And that wasn't long after they won the first Nobel Prize for this. Marie went on and won a second one on her own later. But he was too sick for them to go and accept the first one. Okay? All right. Just all of that is just, you know, a little intro to because you got to give them their due. Um, there's two, so what we're going to begin to look at now are the nuclear reactions, okay, that are a result of this radioactive decay. And nuclear reactions are really a lot like chemical reactions, except like we're looking at atomic numbers and mass numbers and not charge. So in nuclear reactions, there are two things, two rules that always, always hold. One is that the sum of the mass numbers of the reactants must always equal the sum of the mass numbers of the products. So there's a conservation of mass numbers. So add up all the mass numbers in the reactants, it has to be equal to all the mass numbers in the products. And the second rule is the sum of the atomic numbers of the reactants, I bet you can guess the ending, has to equal the sum of the atomic numbers of the react of the products. Okay, so cost conservation of mass number and atomic number. Okay, so we'll keep that in mind as we balance our nuclear reactions. So under the spontaneous reactions there are three. Okay, um, the first one involves the uh, first one is called alpha decay. Okay, and we've come across alpha particles. So alpha decay 
our reactions where um, it's the spontaneous emission of an alpha particle. Uh, and remember an alpha particle, so it's spontaneous emission of an alpha particle. Why am I writing this? Because I wanted to, so the symbol for alpha is, alpha is the first letter in the Greek alphabet. It looks like this. And these, these things that were given off in these reactions were named alpha particles because they were the first subatomic particles studied in nuclear re, uh, in radioactive decay and because they didn't know what they were they called them after the first letter in the Greek alphabet. We now know that they are two protons and two neutrons together. So not separately but together in one entity. Okay? And, that, and we know this is really the nucleus of a helium atom then. Okay? Just me, or is that blurry? I guess it's blurry because I'm tilting it. Okay, so um, now a few little notes about uh, alpha decay. <clears throat> alpha particles, when they're emitted, ha are, are not high energy. They have relatively weak penetrating power, so you don't have to worry about them doing a lot of damage to you. You can defend yourself from alpha particles by holding up a sheet of paper, and uh, that will they won't be able to pass through it. Um, when the when a nucleus emits an alpha particle, so and we well we would write it as four two alpha, or you will also see it written as four two he. These are both alpha particles because remember it's the nucleus of a helium atom. So when a nucleus emits an alpha particle, its mass number will go down by four and its atomic number will go down by uh, two. So an example of something that undergoes an alpha decay is uh, Ra, Ra226, and Ra, if you look on the periodic table, is 88. And so I'm telling you that it emits an alpha particle, and you then should be able to tell me what the other thing is. Remember, it has to be conservation of mass number, so this must be 222 and it has to be conservation of atomic number so this must be 86 and then you would look on the periodic table and find what element has an atomic number of 86 and when you do that you should find Rn and then this is your first nuclear reaction okay um, now lots of times when an alpha particle is given off this nucleus is high energy and it will have to emit energy too, but for right now, we'll come back to that. Okay, um, so this is uh, alpha decay. The second type is called beta decay. I'm trying to get my sheet straight so I'm not totally writing at an angle. Beta decay. Now, beta decay was the second type of radioactivity that was studied. Um, and they didn't know what the particle was that was being emitted, so they called it a beta particle, the second letter in the Greek alphabet. We now know what a beta particle is. It's an electron that's being emitted from the nucleus. Now, you might want to pause and think about that. Beta decay occurs when the nucleus of an uh, unstable atom emits an electron. Well, in all the study of we, that we did in quantum and in atomic, we didn't find any electrons in the nucleus. So it's no wonder that people that were studying it way back when didn't, didn't cross their mind that this, elect, this beta particle could be an electron. But it is. Okay, and so you will often hear in this, we'll say it's beta particles being emitted, but we now know that they're really electrons. I'll come back to it in the next video because I think we're about to run at a time. The obvious question is, though, where do these electrons come from? So beta decay happens in nuclei that have a large number of neutrons compared to the number of protons. So inside the nucleus, there's a, at a time.